Uh, we're here at the uh, 2011 Spring uh, Conference, ASCHE, and we're here with Sergio Garcia, uh, who is going to uh, talk about his uh, work with uh, air dispersion models uh, uh, relating to uh, uh, emergencies and dispersions of hazardous uh, vapors and chemicals in uh, emergency response situations. So, Sergio. Hi, how are you? Martin? Let, it, uh, <laughs> uh, let us know about your work. Okay, so I'm from Colombia and the idea, well, my project actually came up as a collaboration between the local government and the university. Why exactly? What was the, pr what was the purpose of this project? Well, our governments, well, I'm from a third world country, we, uh, developing country, we can't exactly afford an expensive tool such as a CFD tool, CFD model. So, the, the idea of the whole project was to provide the government with a low-cost, easy-use tool so that they can use for emergency response involving uh, the transport of hazardous materials, the dispersion of hazardous materials, basically, see exactly how many people are affected, uh, transportation networks, electrical networks, etc. So what we wanted to do, what we wanted to do was validate certain models and build a computer tool that could be used by the government. So we picked uh, the Bloom model, Britter McQuaid model, which is completely empirical an empirical model, the Slab model that solves one-dimensional set of conservation equations, and finally we have the CFD model, which is basically the most complete type of model existing nowadays in the in the industry. How are we going to validate precisely these models? Well, we can't exactly go to the laboratory and spill a bit of chlorine and see how many people are affected around it. So we wanted to, we went to a little with a theoretical approach. We wanted to validate it with respect to another existing model. So the CFD model that we had available in the university, which is FLAX, has been extensively validated for hydrocarbons, especially methane and propane. Propane is a heavier than air uh, gas. Gas. So we were going to we were going to validate it with a, a dispersion scenario involving a horizontal jet of propane at an ambition height of 2.15 meters. So we pick the worst case scenario. We have a very low, a very stable stability class. We have a very low wind speed. We have an, a, a duration emission of 10 minutes. And after doing this, the, the respective simulations, we constructed the uh, ISO concentration contours for 17,000 ppm, which is the AGL2 value, which says at, at what concentration of propane people are going to start having uh, irre irreversible secondary effects. So these were the results we obtained. First, comparing the CFD model with respect to Pascal Gifford. We see that the Pascal Gifford model really underestimates complete re results. Why? Pascal Gifford is a model appropriate for neutrally buoyant uh, gases. So, since our emission was at a height of 2.15 models, it just starts growing with a Gaussian profile, and that's why it takes a while to reach the ground. This model is completely inappropriate for heavier gases. Why? Because heavier gases first descend to the ground and then start dispersing on the ground. Next we have the Brittle McQuaid model. The Brittle McQuaid model uh, overestimated a bit our results, but what was the advantage? The Brittle McQuaid model is very simple. It's uh, a simplification of the scenario, but it meets a very low number of parameters. It only leads like uh, wind velocity and the density of the gas and of the air. It's very simple. And finally, we have the slab model. The slab model speaks for itself. It's, it's, it has the best results with respect to the CFD model, CFD model. And what was the advantage? Simulation time and simulation cost. The slab model did the simulation in under one second. The CFD model took over one day. So we have a very low cost tool with proper models to do these simulations. So we built a computer tool, it's completely programmed in Java. We have a powerful user interface which allows data to be input easily. We included the slab model, the Brittle McQuaid model, and the AGL values database, which are the acute exposure guideline levels determined by the Environmental Protection Agency. It allows us to determine safe distances, safe distances and export data to ArcGIS, which is a geographic information system, which is going to allow us to determine how many people are affected, the transportation network, which was required by our government in the first place. And we can, and we can overlap the results directly with Google Maps right there on the tool. So we concluded that, well, CFD models are the most accurate uh, models to date, but they are not affordable for developing countries like Colombia. So we have a new model, we have a new computer tool available for the country.
Now, have you uh, implemented and distributed this tool to any hazardous response teams in, in the cities or somewhere that have uh, and, and trained them in, it, in their use? Well, the actual the actual part of the government I'm talking about is a branch of the government called FOPAI. FOPAI is a specifically designed is an entity specifically designed for emergency response. Okay. So the idea is to train them, is to educate them is with using the tool. We have been working with them for the past five months, teaching them. They require. They say we need this, we need that, we need you to explain this, why this is happening, etc. So it has been a very close collaboration with them. So we have been. And, uh, educating them all along. Okay. But it's a small group, you're not training uh, local fire departments, local mm -hmm. police departments? Not yet. I think the responses. idea would be to grow. I also want to include this type of studies to undergraduate programs all over the country because it is vastly uneducated and mm -hmm. we we're not really experienced in this kind of this type of studies in our country. Mm -hmm. So I want to let this program be available to undergraduate programs all over the country. Mm -hmm. Is there any? Have you? Is there any way to simulate? You talk about obviously not being able to release some chlorine and see what happens. But uh, from a personal example that I went through, um, could you use something like uh, a, a, an inert carrier gas of some sort and or captain uh, like that? You know the stink in, that they put in natural gas to at least from an olfactory standpoint kind of get a feel for how close the model was. Yeah, of course, but that would need a, a, a bit of more sponsorship and a bit more time. Okay. Uh, this was complete, We wanted to do a completely theoretical approach, okay. but we have the idea to start to develop a bit of experimental results because, well, let's face it, models aren't appropriate if you don't validate them experimentally. I can just sit here, make up a model, but if it doesn't fit with the actual results, it's not appropriate. Okay. Well, put put Methylmer Captain in the back of your mind. <laughs> that would be a good indicator, at least from an olfactory standpoint, of is, is this, how close is this model? Yeah. Can that's... you smell it? And how much can you smell it? So. Yeah, exactly. That's still missing. All right. Thank okay, you very much, Thank Sergio. you very much, Marty. Nice to meet you. Okay.